Uh, welcome everyone, so lovely to see you here and thanks so much for um, opting to come to the secret stage. Delighted to see everyone. Um, I'm going to start with a story and this story should give you what I believe is the best career advice I ever received. And actually I made it up, so it's my own. Uh, <laughs> best advice, which is good, what I do for a living. Um, follow the pregnant woman. That's it, you can take that, that's all you need to know. The story behind Follow the Pregnant Woman was I've been living in Australia for about 10 years and back in 2008, um, yet yeah, the recession, my husband and I opted to move to Ireland, really bad decision. We went back home for family reasons and I got a job in a company called EMC, uh, now part of Dell, so a big tech company, 60 something thousand people globally. Um, and I got into Dell, it was like it took me five interviews for any kind of job just to try and get some work. There was nothing happening in Ireland. I mean, there were no, there were no jobs. It was a really rough time. And um, I got a job in customer service in like a technical space, working shift work. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was a job. I took it just to try and get anything. We had to move back in with my parents. It was just one of those horrendous situations. The job I really wanted and what I had left in Australia was a learning and development manager role and that's what I really wanted to get back into and of course in an organisation like that in Ireland there were about two and a half thousand people, one learning and development manager and one coordinator. So like, how am I going to get this job? Then one day I noticed she was pregnant. <laughs> And so I thought, well, most likely she's going to go on some kind of maternity leave at some stage, so I'm going to follow her around. <laughs> so that's what I did. I followed the pregnant woman. And I followed her for a few months. You know, I told her I was following her. I didn't just stalk <laughs> her. It wasn't a creepy situation or anything. And so um, Jackie, I followed Jackie around. But what I did was I introduced myself. I said, this is the role I really want to do. You know, thank you so much. So grateful to have a job in this environment. Um, but I really would love to um, have that, that L&D manager role. That's all I wanted to do and get that experience in Ireland. Um, so there are a couple of seats up here. So I really, really wanted that role. And so what I did was I really got to know Jackie very well. I spent as much time as possible with her. It's that over and above stuff. As you know, a career isn't built on a 38 hour week. You have to do that extra stuff. It's that discretionary effort. Um, all the effort that you put in yourself is what will actually um, help you succeed in your career. And um, of course I'm telling the, those who know this. Um, and so I spent a lot of time with Jackie and the idea was that by the time Jackie went on maternity leave I was the obvious choice to replace her. And um, fortunately I did get that role and that's actually the role that really kick-started kick um, I suppose the more senior roles in my career which is fantastic. Um, and so that's my advice is, you know, follow the pregnant woman. Obviously the idea behind that, without being creepy or stalky, is that, you know, just look for opportunities. You never know where they're going to come up. And, you know, we know that too often we kind of sit in our space and, you know, you meet candidates, I'm sure, all the time who are afraid to kind of take a risk and stick their necks out. But it's really just get yourself known and getting out there and, um, and be aware of those opportunities that are around you. So, um, about 18 months ago, I left a company called ACOM, a professional services engineering company, about 100,000 people globally. I was the talent management director there, and um, I was looking after, so talent acquisition, bring people in, and then talent management, in this, in this case, is we look after onboarding and people leadership development ongoing from there. That's how we, we talked about talent management. Um, and a whole, for a whole number of reasons, the scope of the role had changed. I've been there for about two years, um, some kind of org restructures, all those kind of usual things that happen. And I decided overnight to go from an organization of 100,000 people down to one. Um, I didn't know that WebEx isn't something that everybody has at home. Uh, I also didn't know that you don't have comms teams and you know, all those kind of things to help you out at home. And so it was a big learning curve going out by myself, so a massive change. Um, and what I really discovered, I suppose, was um, having travelled, obviously I'm from Ireland, yeah, yes. um, having travelled um, around the world in a, a variety of different roles, I felt that I had a career story to tell. But I also met so many people in my career who had incredible career stories. And um, it's really important to think about a career story as it's what happens to you and what's influenced you, you know, what it is, uh, what's been, been important to you, what's your purpose and how do you actually define the new part of your, your career um, based on what's actually important to you and happened to date. And so how do we actually find that pathway next? 
Um, so I wrote the book thinking as well about people who are a bit restless in their careers or they're feeling a bit overwhelmed and they don't know where to go and where to look and how to find people like you. Like, how, how do I know who are the right people to talk to? Where do I go? And so that's how the book came about. Um, initially to try and um, help other people to try and find their way and actually it's quite a reflective piece of work it's it's not about how to write a CV or how to use LinkedIn or any of that stuff it's really what has happened in my past to get me to here and one of the main things in the book as well is about what's holding me back what's stopping me what would you do if you weren't afraid so this is a Sheryl Sandberg as you know um, from Facebook and she hasn't been afraid in her career. 2012, she became a billionaire. That's nice, it's not for everybody. We're not all gonna make that. But what would you do if you weren't afraid? If you think about it, what would you be doing tomorrow if you didn't let your fear hold you back? And we all do it. We all just, we're afraid to take risks. We're all afraid to put our neck out. We're afraid we'd be ridiculed. Or what if somebody thinks I'm just, you know, jumping too, too ahead of myself? What would other people say? I don't know what to do. Do I have the skills? Do I have the capability? Am I ready? Do I want to be a people manager? I don't know. All of this stuff is going on in our heads all the time. Is that right? I'm feeling that. There's so much going on in the world of work. Sorry, this, this is, I took this straight from the book and I have a couple of copies here actually. So this is, this is um, straight from the book and there's an option there if you'd like to tick on the card as well towards the end and I can send anybody who'd like a, a copy of the book, I can get a copy to you. So the changes to the world of work, there's so much happening as we know, um, industries are changing, they're transforming, we're much more about speed and resilience and agility and a lot less uh, like we used to be about cost cutting and effectiveness and efficiency, so it's much more about this high pace, change type of environment. There's so much happening, we know with the workforce, it's much more adaptable, it's even moving beyond just flexible. Um, the first time ever we've got five generations of people working in, in business, in industry. And um, the marketplace is, you know, it's moving right into integrated technology. I know is something that affects all of us as well, and affects uh, particularly the recruitment space. So there's so much happening in the ch in um, the world, and so many changes happening in the workplace. So how do we keep up to date with that, and how do we uh, move, shift our careers so that we can stay relevant? What's happening in recruitment? So much happening in recruitment. Anyone like to tell me? Shout out what's happening for you, what are the changes? No changes? Yes. <laughs> I think the candidates are more in control now, that they ah. were you know, five years ago. Candidates more in control, yeah. yeah. There's, oh, sorry. there's much more tech, uh, uh, whatever software, uh, the just um, talent acquisition people are using, yep. and diversity and inclusion. Yeah. Very, very That's right. We had we had Joanne earlier talking about inclusion as well. What else is happening? We're using a lot more analytics. Yes. To yeah. yeah. A lot more in analytics, um, metrics. Uh, I suppose our stakeholder management is becoming a lot more complex. Um, I know when I was in talent management, um, and some of my experience was talent acquisition, talent management didn't get to work to it together very well. I see a few nods. We wanted to, we tried to, we tried to work together and we were actually physically located in different cities. And I remember texting our, our um, recruitment guy one day and just saying, gee, I didn't know this role was replaced. I found out on LinkedIn. He said, I didn't know either. It's kind of, do you find this? Hiring managers do their own hiring, people arrive. Not in every case for sure, but there are a lot of challenges and a lot of things happening in the space of recruitment. So how do you know where you sit? What's next? How do you keep abreast of that and how do you know what to do next? Did today feel like the Mondayest Thursday ever? Did you wake up this morning? So oh, Monday is not Friday yet. Um, hopefully nobody was, was told. Oh, you know, breakfast is on tomorrow. Do you want to come? Yeah, sure. What is that? I don't care. I just want to get out of the office. Let's just go. <laughs> I'm sure many other great reasons to be here. But isn't that true? Like some days you wake up and you go, oh, God, it's another day. Do I have to do this another day? I know I was there. Not every day is wonderful. Not every day is bad. But if it's starting, every day is starting to feel like Monday. It's not good. You know it's time to make a change when you've got energy depletion or boredom. This is from LearnVest. You're starting to feel uh, apathetic about your role. You kind of go, oh, yeah, come in. You start to get a little bit later uh, every day. You're just kind of go, oh, losing your enthusiasm. Oh, God, not another meeting. 
another candidate. Okay, we've got to go. How do I get my energy back? Bit of jealousy maybe sometimes creeps in. Ooh, why, why are they getting all the interesting things? Why do they get to go on all the programs? Why am, I, why am I not being developed? Why didn't I get to go to that event? I imagine there are people left behind going, hmm, you're at breakfast. I'm good to go. Um, Corn Ferry actually just did a, an article this week as well, or a couple of weeks ago as well, just saying, you know, if your bus ride or your tram ride into work is their favorite part of the day, that's another reason to probably think, mm -hmm. ooh, something's wrong. I need to start making some changes here. Or worse, oh, I wish I could get on jury duty. How do I get on jury duty? <laughs> How do I get out of here? You know, and if you're starting to think like that, because people are going, when's the right time to change? I don't know. What's the next job? I don't even know what I want to do. When you start feeling like this, it's just time to start thinking about it. And it's just, is this, is this the right time? I don't know if the right role is there. I'm not sure. But is this what's right for me? What's holding me back? Why am I not making that change? Why am I not excited about my role? What's actually happening there? So what holds people back from making a career change? Hinman, what do you think? Security. Sorry, security. Yeah, absolutely. I hear that all the time. Security. Yeah. Fear. fear. Yeah, what's the fear of? Failure. Oh, sorry, what was that? Failure. Failure. Oh, failure. Sorry, yeah. Fear of failure. Absolutely. Uncertainty. Just not knowing yeah. what they want to do. Yep, uncertainty. And people often don't know what they want to do because they don't actually spend the time looking inwards, do they? And kind of, what is it that I want to do? How often do you have candidates come to you saying, yeah, no, I really want a new job. What do you want? I don't know. Do you get that? They don't know. Have they done the work? How frustrating. And then you try to help them, and they still don't know. And I hear it all the time as well. And this is, as I said, this is why I kind of pull this stuff together. People need to spend, and you guys can spend your time reflecting on what has worked for you in the past. What's not working? What's holding me back? What would happen if I wasn't afraid? What would I be doing tomorrow? And why is this holding me back? And what can I do to change it? Thanks. <laughs> it's just, there was a photographing take. I should have jumped in. Okay. <laughs> is this you in the hat? Do you have people in your businesses coming to you going, oh, I don't know, I want to do something. I don't know what I want to do. I want to do something next. And you're going, oh my God. And they're just in your ear and you're going, I've got like a thousand candidates, I've got a thousand vacant positions, I've got all this stuff that's happening, I don't know. And then they're saying, yeah, but I, I want to do something. And then you're going, what do you want to do? I don't know, I don't know, help me, help me. Help me, this is what I want to do, I don't know. Does that happen to you? Do you feel like you're, you're the whipping in a hat? You can use that one as well, pregnant woman, whipping in a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Does it feel like that sometimes? Yeah. It is quite, it can get quite frustrating, can't it? Because you're just thinking, I just want to move on myself. I want to get on to my next thing. And these people are here in my ear all the time. <laughs> and it gets overwhelming because you know how hard it is to find the right role. You also know how hard it is, the competition that's out there. What's actually happening in industry? What's changing? How do I overcome the fear? How do I overcome the fear of failure? How do I get my, how do I get some clarity in what I want to do? How do I build my confidence? Confidence is what will get you through that, that fear of failure. How do I get security? You get security by doing the work, by understanding what's out there. And no roles are secure. We know that there's such a, a rise in contingent workforce and part-time and flexible. And how do I get the role that I want? It's about getting clarity on what you want and what you need. And it's not about, I want to work in this company at this level, whatever, but it's saying, this is what's important to me. These are the non-negotiables. This is what I need. Um, I had a career coach um, a couple of times, actually. And one time I had, before I had gone into ACOM, I, said, I decided I wanted a director role. I wanted a small team, if possible, and a little bit of travel, because I quite enjoy travel. And for the recruitment company, it was very easy for them to say, right, now we can look out and find something for Mary because we know what she's looking for. And we also know not to annoy her with the stuff that she doesn't want. Do you think that would be helpful if somebody came to you with that kind of detail? And it's, it's good for you to have that information as well, to know what it is that you want to do and where you want to go next and what are the non-negotiables and what's the stuff you're flexible about. I was quite flexible. You know, I would have liked to work from home if possible, but if I couldn't, I couldn't. That's okay. Now, fortunately, that was something that did work out for me. Um, and if I didn't have a team, that's okay, I could get in and I could try and grow a team in time. But I just wanted to make sure I was in the right culture as well. Culture was really important to me. To have a nice engaging culture in the workforce. 
So it can get very overwhelming, very frustrating. You've got everybody else's problems in your ear and then you're trying to figure out what you want to do and what's out there. And of course, this is such a small world as well. I can see everybody out there knows everyone. It's amazing. Um, HR itself as a broader uh, function is really small, but the recruitment teams, I know, I know so many myself. So um, I know that uh, many of you know each other and then there's that, ooh, what if I say something? And there's gonna be whispers out there. So it's, it can be very overwhelming. So um, I know some people, f it feels quite chaotic. If we think about your career mindset at the moment, you may be thinking, I have no idea. This is the Monday, is Thursday ever. I really want to do something different. I don't know what it is. Do I have to move? I need that security. What if I fail? All of those things are going on possibly in your head. Or you may be just thinking, oh, this is good, I like it, my friends are here, it's a great place, it's really good. I remember when I was leaving my company, I was saying, but the end of trip facilities are really good. Yeah. That's no reason to stay in a job. They really were good though. Um, so you're a bit confused, not really sure what you want to do next. Um, do I want to stay? I've only been here 18 months, is it time to move? Can I move? Is that, does that reflect badly on me? And then some people sit into that space, so it's a bit cloudy, so it's kind of like a frosted window. You can kind of see, you know, what you kind of want to do, but you can't quite get there. Um, and it's how do, you, how do you build that clarity? How do you get that clarity for yourself? Because when you have clarity, you have confidence, and the confidence helps you overcome some of those securities and fears, and actually helps you push through. So when you get clarity, you understand what, where you want to go, what you want to do, and the capabilities required. And then that gives you the confidence to go in and ask for what you need. And it also means you're not wasting time applying for roles that you don't actually really want, or you're not running away and chasing the shiny toy. I imagine many of us have done that. Have you done that before? Because oh, that looks good just to get out of here. I'll take that one. That happens as well. So if you're really clear what you want, you won't be spending time wasting your time and wasting other people's time and just kind of go, why, why did I do this? Why did I make that move? It wasn't that bad. I should have just stayed where I was. Mm -hmm. But really getting that clarity and knowing what you want is so important. Do you know what's interesting about that? Sure. When you, get to that, when you get to that chaotic state, it's really hard to have clarity. Yes, it and is. It's, yeah, I'd be curious to know how you kind of get not exactly yeah. through that, but I know people who are in that chaotic state yeah. and it's hard to get back to being clear to know what they want to do next. Yeah, they should get a career coach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's true. So when you are in that chaotic state, it's very hard to be rational and to kind of produce any kind of structure around it. Um, and I suppose that's what's, what's in the book and the program that I offer is around how do you reflect on those things? So how do you get rid of all that noise? How do you take the time to be introspective and say, what worked for me before? What hasn't worked? Of course, what, quite often what we think about is recency. So what happened in my last job or what's happening today? Um, okay, so I really don't like that manager, or I don't like working for women or men or whatever it is. I don't like that. But that might only be in that last role, and then we lose perspective of what's happened previously. And we need to take that time to really think through all of that and decide what it is that we want. We get there eventually. And you actually, you may get very clear, and then suddenly something happens. Um, you may miss out on a promotion, for example, and then you're just dropped back into confused. Oh, I thought I was doing really well. I was really clear. I knew that that job was for me. And then suddenly you miss out and you're all confused again. Do I want to stay here? Do I want to work for that person? We were friends. We used to sit next to each other and now I report to them. Is that what I want to do? And you flip up and you kind of go, oh yeah, look, I think I could or the other opportunities would come up or I could move to Sydney or whatever it is. And then something else would happen. So you just, you do move through this quite a lot. You don't go from straight from chaotic and um, right through the processes or right through that process up, to, up the ladder, it moves around quite a lot. Thank you. Any other comments actually on that? Okay. So what you need to do is get clear on your career. You need to get that focus. Clear and career rhyme, so it's good to help. <laughs> um, so we need to get that clarity and so that you know exactly what you're asking for and that you've got that clarity in your head. We also need to invest in ourselves. As I mentioned earlier, I'm sure you've got candidates coming into you all the time saying, oh, yeah, I don't quite have the qualifications or I could do it, but it's a course and I have to do it in my own time. And do you have that sometimes? Or you feel, do I really want to do that program? Do I want to do you know, that study? Do I want to um, 
you know, work overtime to try and get that kind of uh, capability that I think I really need. If we think about tradespeople, right, they buy utes, they buy their tools, they invest in themselves all the time, they upgrade their equipment. But for some reason, as knowledge workers, we don't do that enough. We just kind of think, oh, the business should actually be supporting me, they should pay for my education or my development, or my manager didn't ask me. Doesn't that happen all too often? And we know in exit interviews as well, people say, I wasn't developed, nobody developed me, and this is why I'm leaving. We need to actually make that investment in ourselves. Um, when I was at ACOM, um, there are actually there's loads of free stuff out there as well. Um, once a month, my team, my, one of my team members and I would go to some kind of breakfast, master class. <coughs> there's stuff happening all the time. There are speakers out there all the time. There's stuff, breakfast, you get free breakfast as well. You can go to, go to breakfast, go to you know, events in the evening, and in the entire year we went to something every single month that was maybe two or three hours, and not once do we have to pay for it. So that was just an investment of our time, it was kind of very early starts, but that's fine. You know. So you need to actually invest in yourself and not wait for other people to invest in you. We just don't do that enough. It's like the, the reason the shoemakers there, you know, the shoemakers' children always go barefoot, that's what they say. So mm. we need to actually invest in ourselves. You know how important it is to have the right capability when candidates come into you and you being in that position you need to have that, that similar type of clarity and capability. Um, so the program that I have in, in the book, as I say, um, if you'd like to fill in the card before we leave, I can send each of you a copy of the book. I didn't um, have a trailer with me today to bring, <laughs> bring enough books, but um, there are three elements to the program. The first one's clear the fear. So I've mentioned that about what's holding us back. The second one is build the map. So where do I want to go next? What do I want to do? What do I think I'd like? What are some of the environments and um, industries I've worked in? And what's important to me next? So as I said, mine was I'd love to have a little team. I'd love to get some, somewhere that has travel. I'd love to work in headquarters. That often helps as well. Um, and finally, how do we bridge that gap? So how do we bridge the capability gap to make sure that we're the person who's selected for that next role? If we can clear the fear, build a map, we get clarity. Build a map, bridge the gap, brings us, identifies the capability that we need. And that's not technical capability. It may be project work or it may be leading a small team or um, it may be improving communication skills and whatever that capability is that you can identify what that capability is so that you can develop it. If you have clarity and capability that's what gives you confidence and if you have confidence that's what helps you to get the role. I'm um, sorry again hopefully you can see that so this is straight from the book again so what's stopping me is some of that stuff we talked about um, it's too hard, I can't do it, I don't have the confidence, um, there's ambiguity, I don't know what I want, there's the overwhelm, maybe I'm not good enough, I'm not tech savvy enough, I'm too old. So many different things that are coming up for people that it's holding them back. But what happens if I did actually push through that? What if I got over that fear? So what's pushing me? My happiness, my future, clarity. Flexibility, look what a flexibility I could have if I move roles. So many people say today, God, I've got great flexibility in this role. I really don't want to leave, I get to work from home on Tuesdays. So many organizations allow that flexibility now, so we kind of tie ourselves and hide behind excuses. Um, I'd have a whole new career. I've got in improved capability, I get additional reward, I've got success, I've got com uh, confidence, and I can finally make an impact. Those are some of the things that you can do if you push through. Think about what drives you, what excites you. You know, oh, well, how can you overcome what holds you back? What would be exciting to you? What would you really love to do? You know, everything on the table, what would you like to do? And how do you get there? How do you change your mindset, your career mindset to get there? Many of you have probably seen this one, the Dan Pink video. Um, I'm not playing it today because I, um, I wasn't sure I had time, but um, it's called The Surprising Truth of what, About What Motivates Us. It's a 10 minute video and I'd highly recommend you watch it. Um, it's a brilliant little animated piece and it talks about there are three things that, are, that motivate us. Autonomy, we want to be autonomous in our roles. And that's not have a manager, but at least be able to make some decisions, decide what, what happens to our role and where do we go. Mastery, we want to be really good at our roles. We want to have that technical mastery. We want to be the person who's known to be the expert in that space. And finally, purpose. Purpose is so important. And particularly with millennials, we know coming up for them as well, we know purpose is incredible for them. Because they're all about contribution rather than consumption, like the previous generations. <coughs> so your purpose, if you can't find the purpose in your new role or in your current role, it's important to find that purpose outside of the role. 
So not every organisation is going to support your um, charity or your drive or your need or your purpose. But how do you actually fulfil that outside? And when you're happier outside of your role, then it'll help you to be happier inside of your role. Because you need to, again, step up and, and own that and achieve that yourself. Okay, so the second part is build the map. So how to build your map. So you need to think, right, what's next for you? What's next in my career? What would I like? Do I need a promotion? Am I ready to move? Do I need flexibility? Personal circumstances change as well. You may be a carer or a parent or something has, has um, changed in your world that you actually need to work differently. It could be your environment. In my case, um, the scope of the role changed and it was probably time to actually move on, do something different. What's important to you? What has meaning to you? What's going to make you feel fulfilled and enriched in your role? And the method, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? What needs to happen for you to get that next role? And it's not about sitting back waiting. It's about what do I need to step up and do to get there? Bridge the gap. Here, I have many ideas in the book around um, sponsor, stretch, study and start. So sponsor, who's got your back? Who's going to help give me this guidance and pull me through? It can be a coach, it can be a mentor, or it can actually be a sponsor. So they say a mentor is someone who shows you the door, and a sponsor is someone who pulls you through. So in your organisation, do you have somebody who's in a senior position, who's in a position of influence, who can pull you through and kind of say, oh, you know, I know Sarah wants that next job, and actually um, work it to, make, to get them into that position. Um, and there's a lot in there about how do you find the right sponsor? Um, how do you make it attractive to them? How do you make yourself attracted to, to that sponsor? And what's important for them as well? What are they getting out of the situation? The next thing is stretch, so feel the discomfort. Most learning comes from feeling a little discomfort. Um, how do I stretch myself? How do I try something new? How do I you know, invite myself into another team? How do I learn from another part of the business? How do I get to understand everything that's going on in the business? Or do I sit back and just think I'm here in the front facing um, client facing parts of the business or do I get in and understand the strategy? Can I clearly articulate the strategy? Study, so it can be a degree or it can be as I said just um, learning what's going on, what's going on in the outside world, how do I keep across that, how do I know what's happening in businesses and um, there's so much um, available to us now that we can keep across all of what's happening in the business but get out and learn network as well. And then start to try something new. So get yourself known. How do you make an impact in the organisation? How do you get known as somebody who wants to, do, to step up and do something different? And it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be related to your role. It could be, you could be the new sustainability champion, whatever it is, that you take on something new. Okay, and there's loads of ideas. Yeah. Um, I just, I couldn't help noticing that it's very similar to change management yeah. framework. You yeah. know, like establish urgency, find a sponsor. Sure. You know, yeah. Yeah. And it is change, it's change of your career, so it's trying something, yeah. something different and thinking differently about it. Yeah. A any other comments? Good. And um, these are three people, I interviewed nine people for the book, um, because I really enjoy people's stories, I think they're really quite fascinating. Um, some of you may be familiar with Kate Morris, she's the founder of Adore Beauty online. She founded it, I think she was 19 in Tassie with her boyfriend's parents' money or something that she started mm -hmm. off with. And she's really progressed into this global um, uh, uh, online beauty store uh, based in Northcote, actually, based near here. Near here. Um, and she is a very strong advocate for women in STEM, and she provides um, an internship for them and a bursary to support their education as well. And she's somebody who um, stepped up more recently about, she's got a thing called Manals, she doesn't attend any panel that's just men and she's quite a strong advocate for that uh, which I love that and she's very vocal about it and she did have to say to her partner and she said I'm just going to put my neck out there is something I have to do it may be challenging for for us as a family but I really feel I need to do it because it was her purpose it was something that she had to do so the beauty line came out initially as well um, she, she noticed that women felt quite intimidated getting their makeup done in big shopping malls and so she wanted something that would actually make women feel comfortable just doing their makeup at home and um, hiding behind, I suppose, essentially just online shopping. And so she wanted to support women and help them feel empowered that way. Um, Anita is, um, she's at UGL. Does anybody know Anita? Um, so Anita, um, she was, she's um, obviously of Indian heritage and 
from, sorry, I shouldn't say obviously, she's of Indian heritage and she was raised in South Africa and she studied there and she was the first woman of colour to be a leader in the rail network um, and also the first woman. So an incredibly strong woman who just didn't let the fears hold her back and she didn't let other people hold her back. And I just love her story, it's so rich and she's two young children now and what she's doing is ensuring that she's trying to create a world and create that change so that her children don't feel in a position um, where they have to fight for everything and fight for their roles and fight for their, their support and be fully included. Um, she's the most humble woman, she's absolutely, she would die if she knew her picture was up there. Uh, she's really lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, so her story is in there. And the final one is um, Dr. Darren Jordan. He, so he says, tenacity is key, don't give up, harness the motivation and keep following your dreams. <laughs> so Darren's story was, he's from Sydney. He is um, at ACOM, that's which is where I met him. And really quiet guy as well. Um, I'm not sure how we, actually people came to me recently and said, where did you find this guy? Like he's absolutely incredible. He's there in Sydney. And he studied creative writing initially, and his parents were teachers, and that's what he enjoyed. And he was involved in the launch of the Harry Potter um, books here in Australia, and he was involved in the, the publishing company. And he said he was literally sat, standing on the street handing out Harry Potter books, trying to get people to get interested in them. Um, and throughout his career, it's a very rich story as well, but he ended up um, studying archaeology and then went off to Angkor Wat and was doing work over there in Cambodia and um, doing all archaeological digs. And now he said, you know, he's just in a field out in yeah. outer New South Wales digging um, and doing his archaeological work, but he does a lot of social work as well and um, supporting archaeological digs and um, the history and everything behind all that. So. It's not about how senior you get, but it's how you create your own story and how do you fulfill your purpose. So they each had a purpose. And it's, it's, most of it um, is about some kind of social engagement, some kind of community support. And so how can you think about what fulfills your purpose and your role? And what is it that you do that actually brings you that kind of enjoyment and strength? Um, so yeah, there are seven more stories. Um, no, nine, nine, six, six more stories. Um, obviously I'm not in the engineering space. I did study maths, would you believe? Um, so again, it's about getting clarity, get some, some clarity in your career, think about what it is that you want to do. So Darren was like, you know, I love, um, I love creative writing, but I also love history and I love everything that's happened in history and I love finding out, you know, how do we get here and what brought us here? And that's how he ended up in archeology. span And that's what he's doing and that's what he loves. And he still writes and he writes for um, radio shows and then as well. So you can actually bring all of that together. Sometimes we're just very tired. As I said, I studied maths. My, my original degree was chemistry and maths. And I can't subtract three from nine. So clearly that's why I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> um, but you know, you can end up anywhere. You can end up doing anything. You just need to take the risk and follow the pregnant woman. That was her story again. So um, that's a little picture from the book. That's not me, it's my friend Jackie in the picture. So, you know, it's really, it is thinking about what are some of the lessons that we've learned and some of the lessons I've learned really are take a risk, you must take the risk and you must look for opportunities and jump for it. If you don't have a career strategy and know, put in the effort, invest in yourself, reflect on what works, what doesn't work, talk to people, get a sponsor, stretch yourself, study, start something new, all of those things, you're just going to end up doing what you've always done. You need to actually do that work yourself and really think about what it is that you want to do. Um, so I do have a program and um, I'm just going to show it to you. We can talk about it later. You can mention on the cards. So what I now do is I do work as a career coach. I work one-on-one -on -one with individuals and I also work with teams. So I do like a group mentoring type of um, coaching arrangement. So. Um, they don't even have to be in like situations because you're talking about what's holding you back. What holds you back isn't always necessarily dependent on your, your role um, in, a, in an organisation. So if you have a team of people, some idea generation stuff together, and that could be, oh, I'd really love to, more about, to know more about, um, I don't know, a particular area of the business, and then somebody can say, I can introduce you, um, and so get that idea generation happening if it's in a group, group environment, but as I say, also do it individually. What's different about this, as I say, is it's not about the next step. It's the stuff that you guys already know. Everything about CVs, LinkedIn, you know, how, where to go and find, find those roles. But what this does is it makes you think differently. 
Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. That's where the career strategy is really important because you need to take the time to really reflect. People say to me, oh, I've read your book. I like, have you taken any notes? And my husband, by the way, is guilty of this. Um, have you taken any notes? No, 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 I just read it. It's like, that's like reading Matt's formulas and saying, oh, no, I read the question. But, it's like, but you have to actually sit down and work through it and take the time and read it in parts and put it down, reflect on it, come back to it. You know, things pop into your mind all the time. You don't just create this overnight. It has to take time. And this is why it's a bit different. And so again, it's about getting clarity, identifying the capabilities you need, and building that confidence to move to the next stage. Um, I've got a three-month one-on-one career mentoring program. It involves lots of different bits around the book, uh, some fortnightly coaching. We can do it by Zoom or Skype if anyone's not available. I use a couple of different profiling tools. The ones I use, I suppose, are DISC, Gallup, Strengths, Genos, Emotional Intelligence, and Leadership 360. Um, I send through recommended readings, our industry insights. I've got a regular Ask Me Anything. So many of my clients call Ask Me Anything. They just text me all the time. And they might say, oh, I've got a job interview tomorrow. What do I do? Or what do you think of this? Or should I apply for this role? And that's kind of how that works. Um, regular video clicks. And I've got a, a newsletter as well, which um, yeah, we get signed up for. And I do, I can talk to anybody separately or again, follow up with the card. Um, I've got a one month program available if anyone's interested in doing like an abbreviated version as well. And similarly, the group mentoring, as I said, is very similar, but it's got workshops and everything involved there. As I say, idea generation and peer practice are some of the elements that are quite different in that. Um, any comments or questions or thoughts? Yes. With group mentoring, how yes. many Look, I would say um, a minimum of six is probably a good idea to get a good bit of idea generation happening. But we can actually combine things, or if you've got smaller, we can work with that as well. Yeah. And that group mentoring, is it within the same company, or is it individuals that you bring in together for a group? Um, if, we have enough, if we have enough people, so the question was, is it, a, is it public or within the organisation? I can do a group mentoring situation if I've got enough people. Maybe if there's enough people today want to make a comment and say, interested in group mentoring, I could actually certainly do a, a public workshop on that as well. Yeah, good question, thank you. Anything else? Um, that's it for me. If you wouldn't mind filling in the value card and we'll collect it on the way out or even hand it to me afterwards. If anyone's interested, you can tick yes, give me a shout or no, or like a copy of your book. Sorry, is that a question? Do you get a card? Sorry, have we got any spare cards? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, Everyone oh, um, over here, and I'm sorry. Oh, there's a few up here. Let's see, did I take any? Oh, sorry, I've got one here for you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I can talk to you about that if you want to give me a shout. Is that okay? Did you want one? Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like, I'm just interested to understand you why you're here, potentially being here to have fallen into a group. So that, you know, like I say, the guy wants to be an archaeologist, that's something that the is quite clear. Yeah, vision. Yeah. So what they want to do, so very often in the area of recruiters that don't have that level of, like they're group recruiters, so they're just a lot of criticism, but it's just... They've fallen into it. When I'm 18 years old, we're like, okay, I'm going to be a fan. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys are best to answer that. Yeah. Do you think? Anyone here like to answer that? If you've fallen into recruitment, how do you work out? I didn't say that, they're his words. <laughs> how do you work out what you want to do next? Like, or has it happened to anyone that they've fallen into recruitment? Yeah. yeah. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a few people like that? Yeah, the yeah. career and yeah, sure. the career so Yeah. Okay. So there's a few. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you asked the group around here who studied, who wanted to be a recruitment consultant when they were younger, who studied recruitment? Nobody. What Who's, are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> we all fell into it. Yeah. That's, the, that's the industry. Oh, there was a wow. Did I hear a wow? Yeah. 
I'm really surprised. You didn't fall into it? Oh, no, yeah, I fell into it. Oh. <laughs> I'm just really surprised everyone else did. Oh, isn't that fascinating? I mean, you know, you just tidy afterwards. Study afterwards. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow, congratulations. <laughs> We have someone. Basic, yeah, basically I'm doing my HR degree and um, was given the opportunity to do recruitment if I wanted wow. to, to get my foot in the HR team. Yeah. Um, so for me it was a great opportunity and I see recruitment as a really important level of an HR career when it comes Beautiful. to supporting employees. Lovely. Oh, it's not nice, see? That's what we should all be thinking. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, I think if you haven't chosen, I think what's really important is to look at, and I imagine if you've been doing it for a number of years, you've worked in different environments, different industries. Um, in the book, there's a kind of a sun and it says, think about all those different industries. What did you like about them, not like about them? Um, what does need to happen? What do I need to study to do, go on and do something else? Um, can I move into maybe a change role or move into um, D&I or something like that as well? But it's working through what has worked, what hasn't worked, and where are the gaps? How do you identify that capability gap? And what I would do is help you kind of work through those industries. So I've worked in across the globe, across, um, I should have said this earlier, I worked in pharmaceutical, I worked for um, Virgin, I worked for tech, I worked for Priceline, um, professional services engineering. So I've worked in a whole load of industries as well. And I've got nice connections in each of those as well. So. Um, yeah, it is, it's, it is a tough piece, but it's really then maybe finding mentor or sponsor, somebody in, in business or industry who can actually help you think differently as well. So it's, it's not just one person or one thing. I think it's a whole combination of elements together that can actually bring that information and knowing what questions to ask as well. Does that help? I was just interested. Yeah, yeah, sure. Anyone else? Are you waiting for me? Oops, did anyone see? Thank you. Thank you all and thank you for participating.